My name is Søren Gammelmark. Uh, I was the primary developer on uh, real cloth. Um, and here at Luxion, we have been looking at cloth and in particular woven cloth uh, for a while. And in order to model a material in a renderer like uh, Keyshot, the first question we ask is, what are the key visual characteristics that differentiate this new material from the other materials? For cloth, there are two aspects of the visual appearance that we want to be sure we could reproduce with the new material. The first is the highlights, and you can see in these images that the highlights are very different, and I will come back to that in a moment. Highlights and textiles are very much more complex than other materials, and cloth has very anisotropic highlights, and that means they appear very different when viewed or illuminated at different angles. In addition, sometimes cloth can have more than one highlight, where most materials only have one. Also, many textiles appear quite soft, and it can be hard to quantify exactly what this actually means, but um, in many cases it can be attributed to what is known as sheen, or a, a highlight at grazing angles. Uh, this is particularly visible on velvet, if you've been looking at that, uh, but many other textiles also show sheen to some degree. Both of these elements can be very hard to reproduce using other materials in Keyshot or in other renderers, which is why we decided to add a dedicated material for this purpose. But let's first have a look at the structure of cloth and what this tells us about the visual properties. Next slide, please. So here you see some pictures of cloth under a microscope. Um, you will, there are three image, three types of um, cloth here. There's both where you can see the entire pattern, and there's a close-up of one of the yarns comprising the pattern. Um, so there are two plain weaves. This is the first and the second, the blue and the green one, and then there's a satin weave. There's some very important takeaways from these images that you can more or less see directly from the images. The yarns that make up the textiles have very different levels of glossiness. For example, the blue yarn is way less gloss uh, is, you know, is way less glossy than the green yarns, for example, in the silk, which is both of them a plain weave, but they have very different uh, levels of glossiness. Also, some of the yarns are much more compressed than others. This is clear in B, where uh, the yarns going to the from the left to the right are much more flat than the yarns going from the top to bottom. And even when you view uh, a textile close up and straight down from the top as, as here, you can see also that the yarns will shadow each other a lot depending on where the light is coming from. This is also quite important for the visual aspects. And finally, as I was alluding to before, the position of the highlights, and you can almost see this from these images directly, that depends a lot on the shape of the yarns and how they enter the weaving pattern. In particular, I have looked a bit closer at the silk, as you can see in the in one of the graphs below. If you light silk at normal incidence, like straight down and hit it just on the top, you will actually see two highlights at what we call off specular peaks. So these highlights are not located where a highlight would normally appear on a rough surface, but is tilted with respect to the normal. Um, and this is called specular splitting, where because you have two highlights, and also it's off specular because it's not located the usual place. And this is not something you normally find on other types of materials, but for cloth and in particularly shiny textiles such as silk and satins, uh, it's actually quite common. And if you look closely the next time you see a piece of cloth, you'll probably be able to notice this. And this is something we can reproduce in Keyshot. So we can take the next slide. So here are two renderings from Keyshot where um, the properties on real cloth is exactly the same, except the weaving pattern. And you will notice the image on the, um, on the left has actually this uh, split highlight. You can see it particularly if you look near to the bump at the center of the image, there are actually two highlight peaks. Whereas if you look on the image to the right, there's only a single very broad highlight. And this is simply due to the weaving pattern and the way it's set up. And you, if you scrutinize the details of the setup in Keyshot, you can see that there is a round uh, vertical um, yarn that's round and very uh, straight, and then there is a loosely woven flat yarn going over the, um, the straight yarns. And this actually gives rise to this split highlights and these long soft highlights that you get from satin. 
I suggest you uh, try this in Keyshot and see which different looks you can get because it can make a surprising amount of difference depending on how you set up the weaving pattern. So it's not just a the texture, there's lots of detail to, to play with there. And the next topic uh, I mentioned in the beginning was the softness of the sheen. So if we can go to the next slide. So as I mentioned earlier, velvet is a very extreme example of sheen. Only the highlights at grazing angle is actually present on velvet, and this gives a very peculiar appearance if you look at it. The reason that velvet looks like this is that velvet is in reality a forest of many small fibers sticking out of the surface. And all these small fibers sticking out of the surface, they are much harder to see if you look straight down them than if you look at them at grazing angle. You can actually see this on the Keyshot material ball to the right, where you can almost not see any of the fibers sticking out of the surface. You can see the effect of the shadow, of course, but you cannot see the individual fibers. But you can more easily see them when you look at them at grazing angle. And this is very much what causes the sheen. It is these small fibers sticking out of the surface. In fact, you've probably noticed, or maybe you have noticed this, if you look at a field of grass uh, with flowers in them, because if you would uh, be looking at the field of grass uh, at a grazing angle, like close to the grass and looking down the, the field, you would be able to see lots of flowers. But if you stand up or stand up high and look down, they're actually much harder to see. And this is very much the same effect. When you look at these fibers sticking out of the surface, they are much more visible if you look at them at grazing angle. And since the fibers sticking out of the surface can kind of catch light and even bend it around corners, this is going to give you this sheen effect, which is uh, a highlight at grazing angle. Almost all textiles has this effect to a larger or lesser extent, where velvet is a very extreme example. Um, and in real cloth, we decided to actually add these small fibers because it does provide a lot of interesting visual detail. Um, we could have modeled it as kind of an in-surface property, but then you wouldn't get uh, be able to make these very fluffy fabrics where it's very clear that these small fibers play a part. But uh, you also get this even very tactile visual complexity that's often ma the make or breaker of a very good image, even if you cannot really see the small fibers. And the next slide, which is just a quick summary, is that it's important to keep in mind when you play with real cloth that the yarn properties and the shape of the yarn is extremely important for the appearance when you look at it from far away. So don't shy away from playing with the weave pattern editor and trying different levels of tension and size and types of yarn when you play with real cloth. And finally, also the sheen is, or the, the flyaway fibers are very important to get this feel of the softness that you get from many fabrics. There's a lot to say about woven cloth and cloth in general, but for now, I hope you picked up a few details about why real cloth is like it is, and maybe get some hints on how to look at cloth and how to reproduce that in Keyshot. That's it from me.